Yeah. So what did you think about Circle G? It well, like I said, Vernon showed us. Was that early? Oh, so that was this was after the. Well, no, Circle no. G was sixty-seven. No, only. it was yeah. So Elvis didn't show you through. So I'm assuming Elvis was actually in L.A. at the time. Then. Um, I don't know where he. he no, he was in Memphis. Because he was uh, recording Speedway, so it was during a time. Yeah. That he was in Memphis. But but it wasn't Elvis that showed us. It was Vernon. Oh okay. In fact, Vernon took us and showed us all over Memphis, and because Elvis had asked him to. Show him around Memphis. You know, he wanted his hometown. Yeah. And so Vernon took us all over, and we felt so bad because he spent like eight hours driving us everywhere, just showing us places and telling us stories. Well, that shows that you were important to Elvis and to Vernon. That's that. Yeah, I that mean, is, that tell, that tells a story right yeah. there. So, and that was muchly appreciated. And at the end of the day, we felt bad because he driving this big old caddy around, which we. We gave him money for gas and he took it. <laughs> <laughs> really? And so when Elvis asked, he says, Does Daddy show you around? We, we said, we saw every inch of Memphis. You know, and, I, and we told him, he says, we even gave him some gas money. He goes, I pay for the gas. Yeah, I was going to say. <laughs> he goes, and he took it? And yeah, he took it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he just shook his head. <laughs> but, you know, it was worth it to us. I mean, yeah. I mean, all day long, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, Vernon was a character. He really was. He wasn't. really was. <laughs> so, did you get to go in Vernon's house on Dolan's? You, got, you didn't get to go in there? No. Yeah. And, um, didn't get to do everything. So yeah, <laughs> but you did a lot. I mean, you've done some amazing I'm not, stuff. I'm not complaining. You went in Graceland when Elvis lived there at yep. Christmas. Yep. And hung out with Elvis. That's yep. what you did. Yep. There's people that would give a million <laughs> bucks to do that. Yeah, it was awesome. Yeah. Yeah. You lived a, a surreal life. And yeah. Unfortunately, I don't think I appreciated it as much as I do now. Yeah. At the time, it was almost a normal thing. Yeah. You took it for granted. That's that's what yeah. they call that. And you mentioned that um that and you told a, a little bit of a story, but you mentioned that there was times when they would call and say, and you go, eh, yeah, 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 it's three hour drive. It's, you know, I'm yeah. tired. It's long I'm weekend. Go. Yeah. It's yeah. true. And even when we were down there, and everybody goes, ooh, you know, the parties. I'm like, I never, never once saw a party. You know, we sat around, we watched TV, we played cards, laid out by the pool. You didn't, it's like going over to your friend's house and just hanging out. And when you're done with it, you get up and you leave. Except with Palm Springs, you didn't just get up and leave. You know, you were there for the weekend. And it could get boring sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> but, um... But you experienced two. You experienced the East Coast and the West Coast. Is the thing. A lot of people experienced the Memphis part of it, mm -hmm. but never experienced the California part of it. Yeah. You got both ends of got the spectrum. Ends. How about Las Vegas? Did you spend some time mm -hmm. here? Yep. Do you live here now? I live here now. Okay. So, um, so you got to really experience. Elvis was kind. Of, he was Las Vegas. He was. He was L.A. He was Memphis. Right. And that's pretty much it. Yeah. You got to experience all three pieces. Yep. Of that of that life. Yeah, Vegas was great. That's incredible. I'd you never, know, we never been to Vegas before until he came here. Really? No. And now you live here. And now I live is, here. Is that influenced by? No, I don't think so. But um, but it was Vegas was very interesting our first trip because we just had no clue and we didn't we didn't know how much it was going to cost. We didn't know what we had to do. We didn't know. <laughs> I mean, we were young. Yeah. And um. And it was great because he picked up our tab, and which was totally unexpected. And it was just it was just a very neat experience. People used to get all dressed up and everything. It was great. And then we we'd, <laughs> we'd get to go up to the suite afterwards. And, hit. and you know we spent time there today. We didn't get to go up to the suite, but we okay. went down to the dressing, dressing rooms room. under under the stage. It's kind of underwhelming, isn't it? <laughs> well. It's underwhelming from a standpoint of just the way it, the aesthetics, the way it looks, but it's overwhelming the fact that it was it Elvis's was his, dressing yeah, room. Exactly, you know? and that nice little elevator. Yeah, it's got that little tiny elevator. So maybe you know the answer to this question. We're trying to figure out, and, and you know, it's funny, I didn't think to ask you because we asked Dick Grove, we asked Stomp, mm -hmm. neither one of them could remember. When you come out of the elevator, okay, there was a hallway to the right, immediately to the right, the way they, the, there's a, when you come out of the elevator, there's a long hallway okay. in front of you. 
Immediately to the right was a, a hallway, a short one. The Sweet Inspirations dressing room was to the right. Elvis's dressing room was to the left, but you could also go down one more door to the right, and that was Elvis's dressing room. Does that, do you recall? I don't either. Because see, that's, that's so funny, but you know what? Um, I recently, um, I'm I, trying to picture it in my mind. I'm asking, I'm asking people to re recall something that happened 50 years ago. Yeah. Okay. And I recently started going through some pictures. I was looking for something, some Scotty, I'm doing a Scotty Moore story. So I was looking for some of my Scotty stuff and I pulled these pictures out and I realized that I had been to Lauderdale courts, which Elvis lived at in Memphis. I had been in 1988 and actually took pictures of it had no recollection know? of going there and yeah. taking pictures. So I'm asking you to, that's 30 years ago. I'm asking yeah. you to recall something that happened 50 years ago. I, and it's just hard. I mean, I can picture the dressing room and I, the elevator is nondescript. So it's a little box. But it's the only elevator. So we know elevator. that's the elevator. Right. right. Um, but yeah, you know, some things stick in your mind and some don't. Yeah. I mean, I kept journals. Um, of every single time we saw him. I mean, I would write down what he was wearing. Have you written there. a book with this journal? No. Why not? Well, it, they're diaries. It's, you know? uh, um, yeah, basically. But, but people would love to know about those things. I, but, it's, uh, but is it because it's personal? Well, or? Oh, there's nothing wrong in them. It's just like they're kind of... Um, I mean, I read them now and it brings everything back to me, but... it. You know how diaries can be they can be very mundane. Yeah. <laughs> and it's just saying this happened and this yeah, happened and this know, happened. Oh, and look, and we had chicken and peas for dinner. I mean. But it's still that's. <laughs> but people, I'm telling you, people would yeah. pay to pay to read that. But I mean, so I, friends, tell her <laughs> that she needs to write a book. But a lot of things, unless you were there and unless you knew the context of what happened before and what happened after, I think some things could be misconstrued. Yeah. And why take that chance? Yeah, I you get know? that. And then there's names you would have to leave out. And <laughs> now you're editing yeah. the whole thing. And So did Elvis give you things? Uh, he did. And do you still have those oh, things? Oh, heck yes. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us something that he gave you. Well, something a, special. I have a TLC. You have an actual real yeah. live TLC yeah, that I, Elvis... He gave it to me in Palm Springs. And friends, that is the TCB necklace for ladies. For Tender women. loving care. Yep. Yeah. Um, for y'all that don't know that. I got a diamond watch, which I still have, um, and a turquoise ring when he was on his turquoise kick. kick. Yeah. He had the jewelers bring up two huge cases that was just filled with necklaces and cuffs. And, and where was that at? Here in Vegas? That was in Vegas, okay. yeah. He had them brought up to the suite. So that's a, I'm actually supposed to interview that guy that oh, was the okay. one that brought that up. So they, he brought that up and he basically said to everybody in the room, pick out anything you want. Wow. So it was all big, big pieces. I mean, big yeah. necklaces and big cuffs and big rings. But there was a pinky ring that just had three turquoise stones in it, set in silver, mm -hmm. that was small. And I liked that because I, I can't wear big things. Yeah. Um, and that's what I picked out. And he, he even said, he goes, you need to pick out more than that. And I'm like, oh, I just want this. This is all I want. And you can't tell him, no, I don't want anything because then he'd get insulted. Right. So you just learn to, okay, I'll pick out something. So, and my roommate picked out um, a long turquoise ring. She had very long fingers and she could pull it off. So One we, of those long skinny ones. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So basically the two of us picked out the smallest thing in the two cases. Um, so I have that, um, and then I have a birthstone ring that he gave me wow. with some little diamonds around it. So it was all jewelry. It was all jewelry. Amazing. Yeah, and then he would give he would pass out his albums to the fans at the gate. Really? A lot of times he would come out with a stack of records that he'd gotten from the Colonel, I guess, or RCA or whoever. Would send him a case of them. Or... Yeah, he'd pass them out. And you have, I'm sure, autograph things. Oh and... yeah. Wow. Yes, the, the first autograph I asked him for, um, I, I said, make it out to, he says, who do you want me to make it out to? And I said, Sandy with an I. He wrote down, to Sandy with an I. <laughs> Pratt. <laughs> and then I, the second one, because now he's getting to be a smart aleck, right? And then I have another 
autograph that says to Sandy from me. I want your name on it, <laughs> not, not me. But then I have actual autographs. So I used to get them for pen pals overseas. Yeah. I'd ask him to sign things, and then I would mail them to my pen pals overseas. Wow. So, but I kept, I kept the ones for me. So, friends, if you got an autograph from Sandy <laughs> really and you're did. overseas, it, it was really, the real thing. It really did come from. That's him. right, because I guarantee you, there's people that go, eh. Yeah. That really that's. They're not going to send me a real autograph. But this is back then when he was alive. I mean, yeah. it was literally, you know, I, I would take pictures of him actually signing stuff and send them a copy of the picture. Wow, you signing. did a lot of... I was thorough. <laughs> yeah, you were. You really did it. <laughs> but, yeah, he was great. He was great about that. And he never turned anybody down for a picture or an autograph or... Bless his heart, he would stop every day, just about, at that gate. Really? Every I mean, unless he had to be inside for a reason, he would, if he didn't stop, he would roll down the window at least. But most time he would drive through the gate, he'd park the car, and he'd walk back up to the gate, and he'd visit. Wow. And then when Sharon Tate was murdered, which is very close to where his house was on Hillcrest, it was like literally five miles mm -hmm. from his house, um, you'll notice some pictures of the Hillcrest house, the gate, it's a wrought iron gate. Then you'll see the same gate and it's backed with metal sheeting. Mm -hmm. The metal sheeting was put up after Sharon Tate was murdered. Wow. And he actually told the fans, he says, I don't want you all coming up here at night anymore. He goes, if I promise to come out, will you promise to leave as soon as I go back in and not be out here at night where because it's dangerous because it's dangerous and everybody you know they said sure you know and he did and they did so, wow yeah so he cared for their oh yeah well-being yeah amazing so uh something that we skipped and i was going to ask you about this before a lot of people don't know this but charlie hodge is was not a very big man how <laughs> tall was charlie five two okay so so, <laughs> he was my height. <laughs> nothing wrong with that, but he's he was a little fella. Yeah, he was fine. But um, when you see him behind Elvis, because of the angle of the camera, he looks taller than he really was in person. <laughs> and uh, and he also played a smaller guitar than normal. Did he really? <laughs> yes, he did. <laughs> okay. What is this? They're saying it's 11 o'clock. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's, it's probably my wife. <laughs> and, uh, well, Sandy... Thank you so much. This is going to mean a lot to the fans, and I promise you they'll reach out to you. <laughs> oh, I'm there. And, and it meant a lot to me to get to hear these stories and to meet you. This, Dave, I've heard a lot about you because I've already told you. I heard this. I heard that. I heard this. And um, and they didn't have their stories quite right, so that's See, why I like that. This is what happened. That's right. That's why I like to ask the source, so I know exactly <laughs> got what the, the general idea. Yeah, it was. Their stories were close, but not exactly. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, so you know, I, I heard. Uh, well, you straightened some of the stories out. Let's just say that right. uh, they <laughs> were slightly different than what than okay. what I was told. Well, good. So, set the but this you. is uh, Sandy Miller right there, friends, and she is right here. We're in Las Vegas, and uh, so the last thing is, I want a hug from oh. a lady that hugged Elvis. <laughs> right. So what do you think about that? Thank you so much, Sandy. Thank you. And this is great. And friends, reach out to her and uh, and give her some love from the Elvis fans. Uh, Elvis fans are the best. Yes, they are. They really are. <laughs> Amazing. Yes. Thank you, Sandy. Thank you.